this morning we are hauling out oh, the usual like a nervous breakdown <laughs> before we move the boat in a tight space I don't feel entirely ready to haul out and start doing boat work and you know being out of the water and still because um, we had in our heads that we were definitely gonna get to Portugal and this is a bit of a last-minute decision but you know we have to make the most of the um, wind circumstances which is too strong and dead against us and I think once we're in the yard it will feel really good to start ticking off the to-do list mm. so yeah, it'd be nice to start getting stuff done yeah Skua is a Tayana 37 and being a double ender with a full keel and a cutaway forefoot she reverses like a drunk elephant she's also not great at doing sharp turns we're in a tight spot here, so we launched a dinghy to help her out. Yeah, I think so. It's a little bit nerve-wracking getting her into position, but now it's kind of like in the hands of the marineros, so... Yeah, we can use the lines to actually slot them in there. Yeah, it's quite good this one, because like you just kind of come onto this bit, and then like you're done. You don't have to actually like reverse it into a narrow spot. Yeah, it was a bit nervy with the bob stay because they put it like right over the wall. Oh yeah, I'll take a shot of that. <laughs> a bit like the boat always moves back and forwards a bit as they're like edging it forwards. I thought they were going to swing the bob stay into the wall, but it's fine. And the fouling's not super bad, it's just all this like crusty, wormy stuff. So hopefully that'll come off with a pressure washer, which they're going to do in a bit, and then we can start work. So this is our new home for the next few months. This is the view from our bow. Could be worse, right? <laughs> it's pretty cool that we're behind the marina. Now that the boat has been hauled out and pressure washed, we've had a good look at the bottom of the boat, which as you can see, needs quite a lot of work. The um, boat was copper coated a long time ago, I think maybe six or eight years ago. And they made a fundamental mistake when they copper coated the boat which was to put on a solvent based primer before the copper coat which um, copper coats instructions now say that you shouldn't do that I don't know if they did at the time but you need to use a solvent free um, primer if you're going to copper coat and that's led to the blistering of this copper coat and when it blisters <clears throat> obviously you get lots of little bubbles and then when it's pressure washed all those bubbles are burst and you end up with this extremely rough surface which um, is obviously extremely unfair in the fared hull sense and um, probably slows the boat down a bit especially in light winds so we're going to remove all of the old copper coat which is difficult it's quite a thick coating, it's quite a hard coating, and it's got quite a soft coating underneath. Like comparatively, what's underneath is softer than the copper coat. 
So I've tried a few different ways of removing it. <clears throat> I've been working on the other side to get it, get a decent process of how to remove it. And the way that I've found works best is to first scrape with a backhoe scraper, scrape it off the old anti-fouling, which has been put on over the top of the copper coat, and then use an angle grinder with a flap disc to remove most of the copper coat and then use a random orbital sander to remove the kind of like tops of the ridges of the furrows that are left when you use the flap disc. So now you can see that the anti-fouling blue and the green of the copper has mostly been removed and then it's left this kind of like really rough surface where so this is copper coat and then in the bottom of the like craters it's still got anti-fouling in and then this is the primer which is on top of the gel coat underneath This is obviously just a standard angle grinder with a flap disc. This was an 80 grit disc, but I basically just let it wear out. So I wanted it basically as smooth as possible because then it gives you more control. If I switch to a new 80 grit disc, then I think I'd have to like do it really like way more carefully. So I found that just like letting the disc clog up and it's not very sharp anymore. Um, that allows you to get as much control as possible. And then next is the random orbital sander. So with this, because it's got this kind of like softer surface and it just um, presses up against it, it can like remove the ridges. So as you're working, it just takes off the tops and leaves the bottoms. So it smooths it out a lot more. But obviously if you were trying to take off all of the copper coat with this, then it would take you way too long. Um, yeah, you spend weeks and weeks doing it. So. This is just really as like a finishing this stage to get it back to the primer and gel coat underneath. So to make it less um, tiring and to make sure I don't get RSI or anything like that, I've been doing a bit of scraping, then a bit of angle grinder, then a bit of sanding and that way your body is not just doing the same thing over and over and over again, especially the angle grinding which takes a long time and it's a very repetitive kind of movement. It's nice to break it up with some scraping. It took Ryan 10 full days to remove the copper coat from Skua's hull. Fairing the hull was also a bit of a mission. So before copper coating your boat, think long and hard about it. Taking it off is a lot of work. So after all of that sanding, which is a lot because the copper coat's quite thick and it's quite hard. Um, we're left with a surface that looks like this. So some areas it's better, some areas it's worse, but um, it's not completely fair. Some areas, um, obviously the grinder's gone through a little bit and nicked little bits out from the primer. <clears throat> the gray stuff is the primer. And then, yeah, in some areas it's just generally not that smooth. So I've been going around and marking up all the areas that I want to fill some spots all it'll need is some primer put on top and then that sanded back flush and then some spots will also need some actual like epoxy filler 
but either way they all get um, primed first because the filler we use needs priming. So to find these spots, all I'm doing, it normally helps if the sun is kind of shining along it because <clears throat> then any like low spots cast a shadow. But I'll just go along and try and look along the surface and just see any low spots and then feel with my fingers whether it feels like um, it's rough or whether you can feel the edges of things. So here there's like some marks where the grinders just like doo -doo 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 -doo, scratch these out. So all that will need is some primer over the top and then sanding back flush. Lots of them are quite easy to see because like little red bits show through. <clears throat> so that looks like a little area there that needs filling. But some spots are harder to find. Especially, um, we don't have any here, but sometimes if there was thicker primer on for whatever reason, then it can be harder to um, see the difference. So that needs to come out to like there. That needs to go to there. So to find low spots, I just use this. If you can't really sort of like feel them very easily or see them very easily, then what you can do is just draw over the area Maybe in like a grid pattern. And you could do this over your whole boat if you wanted, it's just it takes a long time and our ones are quite visible. And then use a piece of, so I've got 220 grit sandpaper on a thin bit of ply. So then you can see there it's left where the low spots are, it's just left the pencil lines and then the high spots it's sanded them off. So then you can go ahead and mark that up, so I need that area. Something like that. That looks a bit there. So we're just going to go around now and put on the epoxy primer. In some cases this will be enough to completely fill the hole and when we sand it back it will be flush but in other cases if the hole is deeper than the thickness of a primer then we'll sand it back and there will still be a, a low spot which will then have to come back and fill with um, like proper filler. This is the epoxy primer we've been using. Um, it's by C-Tech although we're not sponsored by them or anything like that. It's the only one I've ever really used as well, so I don't really know whether this is a particularly good one or a particularly bad one. But it seems to go fairly hard and it's easy to sand. And the main reason we're using this one is that it's available in Europe quite easily because you can get it from a shop called SVB who are like the biggest European chandlery, online chandlery. So yeah, it's a fair bit cheaper than some of the other ones that you might buy in the local chandlery. And yeah, so far so good with it really. Before applying the primer, Brian cleaned the low spots with cleaning solvents. So I'm putting it on a bit thick because mm. then when I sand it back most of these will just have um, like the primer will be thick enough that it will then be fair. And then another thing is that I usually try and leave brush strokes in it because then when you sand it back if there are any spots which are still a bit um, low you can see the brush strokes. After sanding back the primer, Ryan applied two-part epoxy filler. Now that all the filler and primer has dried off, I'm going to um, sand these back. So 
So these are just a little bit proud of the surface. And I'm just going to use the sanding tool and then take it back so it's nice and flush. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider supporting our production on Patreon or buying us a beer via PayPal. Join us next time as we keep ticking jobs off our to-do list in order to get Squirrel ready to cross an ocean.